Hello everyone. Welcome to a sneak peek at a day with the masters marketing mastery conference. We are so excited to be here with our masters. We have right now we have Bob Berg, Kathleen Gage, Susan Lister Lyons, and Heidi Richards Mooney, and we're waiting for JB Glassinger. And I am Christina Rowe. I'm an author, internet marketing, branding, and PR specialist, and I show business owners how to zoom in and target their desired clients on social media and build profitable groups and connections that convert it to new business and sales. But before we get started, I want to I want to briefly introduce each of our masters. So let me tell you about Bob Berg. He is a highly sought after speaker and best selling author of Endless Referrals and The Go Giver. Bob has shared the platform with notables, including today's thought leaders, broadcast personalities, including a former United States president. Let me tell you a little bit about Kathleen Gage. She is a no nonsense, common sense online marketing strategist, speaker, author, product creation specialist, and Kathleen is the owner of Power Up for Profits, which helps people make money online. And we also have Susan Lister Lyons. She's the founder of The Profit Insights. Susan specializes in designing online sales funnels to create leads and sales coming in automatically. Using The Profit Insights, Susan's seven figure business specializes in helping business owners grow, scale, and optimize. And finally, we have Heidi Richards Mooney, who is the founder and CEO of Women in E Commerce, an internet marketer and social media trainer, award winning author. Sorry, I'm just messing up my teleprompter here. <laughs> okay, I'm going to bring it here. Now what happened? Okay, sorry Heidi. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, a social media trainer, award-winning author. Heidi works one-on-one -on -one with authors, inventors, and small business owners to help them maximize their time on social media channels across the web. Together, Heidi and I are producing A Day with the Masters. This is the Marketing Mastery 2014 conference at the Broward Convention Center. And we have our wonderful speakers here. We're going to be, uh, I'll introduce JB when he joins us. So let's get started. Um, let's talk about mentors. Actually, I just skipped, a, probably skipped a question, but let's, we'll, we'll jump to this. If you had a mentor, this is the first question we're going to ask you guys. If you had a mentor that helped you with your professional development, tell us about it and why a mentor was and is so important for your own growth. We'll start with Bob. You know, Christina, that's always an interesting question for me because my mentors came in various forms. Uh, grew up with great parents, so I, I really got to see how people lived a good life, providing wonderful value and and, and so forth to others, and and cared about others, and so that was my first form of mentorship, just absor uh, observing a great marriage and great people. I'm um, prejudiced, obviously, but you know, people who I love dearly. Uh, my dad, who is probably when it comes to people skills, to uh, I was able to really watch him in action and just kind of see how by being genuinely interested in people and making people feel genuinely good about themselves, uh, how helpful that is to everyone involved. As I got older, there were different mentors, of course, in different areas. As I got into sales, I would read books. People like Tom Hopkins and Zig Ziglar before I ever met them, and Brian Tracy before I ever, they were mentors because I got to, to read and study them. Uh, then there were people when I'd have a, there were what I call, and what one of my mentors, Dante Scumachi, who I, I just love, what we both call drive-by mentors. These are the kind of people who just happen to be there and say that right thing at the right time. And if you're listening, they can make a huge difference in your life. Uh, and then there were pe there are people like Heidi Richards Mooney, who I've been learning from and who's been a dear friend of mine for years. And whenever I speak with Heidi, I feel like I want to take notes because she's so <laughs> great things. And so when there's people, you know, here, here, Kathleen, who I've known, and Susan, who I'm getting, and JB is an, actually in one of my mastermind groups, and he's been a wonderful mentor. So, so while mentor can be that special one-on-one, -on -one, very deep relationship, there can be other forms of mentorship, and what it really is, I think, is we need to pay attention and really be open to when these great people come into our lives. That's that's very, very true. So I'm going to pass the question now to Susan. Ah, cool. <laughs> you know, I absolutely agree with Bob. I think that... Um, 
you know, my earliest form of mentorship was when I was growing up, I had two very influential people in my life. My grandmother, uh, who raised me until I was six, and my Uncle Bill, who's my honorary dad, who's, you know, thank goodness, still with us today. Um, Uncle Bill was the first <clears throat> self-made millionaire and entrepreneur in our family. And... Uh, um, as you can imagine, you know, his advice along the way uh, has just been invaluable to me. I'm, I'm also a really big fan of coaching and at certain points in my life, depending on the, the help that I needed, I always look at coaching as kind of like on demand, right? So the specific thing that I want to focus on or the specific challenge that I have in my business, whatever that business may be, that's the coach or the specialist that I seek out at that given time. So for example, um, last year I coached with with uh, a woman named Suzanne Evans and I went to her specifically because I wanted to get better at doing large three-day events and Suzanne is a master of doing large three-day events um, and I also wanted to uh, streamline my coaching program and those I think are her two highest levels or areas of expertise um, and I you know check check right so last year we cracked the nut on both of those things this year I'm building a sales team in-house to um, offer some of our programs and help close some of the larger ticket items over the phone and so that was the specific focus for me this year in 2014 and so I went out and sought out the very best uh, sales trainer that I possibly could who specializes in our industry information marketing and hired him not only to train me right because I always have to feel like I have to be able to do the thing first before I can ask anyone in my business to do it and then I hired him to help create some scripts and help do some coaching and training for the sales staff that I've brought on board so absolutely agree with Bob pay attention you know to the mentors as they appear in your life because sometimes they don't always look like mentors, right? You have to pay attention to those special uh, nuggets of wisdom that they happen to drop on you. Um, and uh, earliest mentors were in the family and now kind of my on-demand, uh, what is that area of focus for me and that's what I seek out. Well, that's great advice. So, Kathleen? Yes and yes to both what they said, so I'm done. No, um, actually my first, my first mentors were my parents and it was all about uh, how to have a great relationship. They were married nearly 61 years when my dad passed and I really got to see what it was to have a committed relationship. So as with Bob, I would say that was really a model for what to do. And in business, I've had many, many mentors, like Bob said, the drive-by mentors, or maybe Susan said that, uh, where you have somebody, you just get that nugget of information. And actually, Susan and I met at a conference five years ago, four or five years ago, uh, Brendan Burchard conference, and we both joined the mastermind that he had. And he was a mentor at a certain level, had great information, and like what Susan said, there are certain things that I will hire people for to get that bit of information. And, uh, Oh, there's JB. Hey, <laughs> where are you? Yet? Hey guys. Brand first, and I thought, is this a different kind of video stream? <laughs> and, uh, so anyway, um, I I actually I will hire based on what I need, and right now I am being mentored by Suzanne Evans specifically for the reasons that Susan said, and uh, I look at where do I need to improve my life, and the one thing that I always advise people is be willing to invest in your mentors and do your due diligence before you hire somebody. Because I, I was talking to somebody recently who hired somebody that wanted them out on the platform, very visible, <clears throat> doing a lot of video. This person is the greatest introvert I've ever met and they would rather die than get on the stage. <laughs> there are other ways that you can actually get your message out. So hire the people that can teach you what you really want to know and decide what do you want to know, then find those people. Great advice. Well, JB just joined us, so I want to say hello, and I also want to read your introduction. Um, let me tell you a little bit about JC Glossinger. She, he is a master of human potential. JB is an internationally known speaker, author, and coach and consultant whose life purpose is to help people manifest what they're wanting in their business, organization, and personal lives. So welcome, JB. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Yay. Is my thing backwards, or can you see my lower third? <laughs> you can see it. It's good. It always looks backwards to you, more. but it looks yeah, perfect I'm, for everybody else. Yeah. I'm not the okay. hangout expert, so as long as you can win. Last night on Facebook, I think I saw your leg or something. You were having acupuncture? Yeah, we, we went to the heat game with Rick Goodman. You know Rick. And, oh, I love it. Uh, 
That yeah, Rick's great. awesome. And he was, a, you know, the, the doctor for the St. Louis Rams. And I was like, man, my knee's hurting. So on the way from the game, he's like, hey, I'm going to put some needles in that thing. So <laughs> 11 o'clock at night, we're needling my knee, you know, and it feels 100% better today. It's crazy. I'm so happy we did it. That's amazing. Yeah, acupuncture is great. So we were just going over before you came in about, uh, we were talking about mentors. And so um, I'm going to ask you the same question. Um, if you've had a mentor that helped you with your professional development, tell us about it and why a mentor was so important for your own growth. Well, you know, it's, it's amazing because we did that podcast the other day, and, and I, I was mentioning the, the importance of my mentors, and, and my mentors are now my mastermind, and, and my mastermind is a significant mastermind. You know, I, I was very cheap and wouldn't uh, pay uh, to play, and, and I actually had a, one of my really good friends and mentors is Jeff Walker, who does product launch formula. He's pretty successful in, in internet marketing. Um, and I spoke to his his mastermind group, and you know he they offered me to come in. It's very limited, and I said, well, you know, at the time it was twenty some thousand dollars, and I said, you know, I, I just I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't pull the trigger on that. I'm like, that's a car, you know. <laughs> I'm thinking about <laughs> the amount of money. So last year, you know, I was, I was coming off the golf course, and I've been kind of semi-retired just playing golf because we built Morning Coach up big enough that. You know, I don't have to do a lot of things to, to make it grow, but I was thinking it's about impact. So I had to get a mentor. I had to get somebody to help you know, kind of push me forward, and I decided to call Jeff up and say, hey, look, get me in the group. Uh, you have an amazing group, and, and I need to get in there. And so I made the investment, and it's gone up. So now it's like 30 some thousand dollars and I swallowed and said, okay, I'm going to do it. And literally the first two months, actually the first quarter of this year, I've done more this year in revenue than I did probably the last, I would say, year and a half combined. Um, it's wow. amazing how big my business has grown. You know, we have 100,000 plus on Facebook now and, you know, 50,000 of those people engaged and we just have so many people going. And my thing is the mentorship of that group, of having people with that much skin in the game changed my life. And I had to get over the mental hurdle to go ahead and make that investment. And that was a challenge. I mean, it was very challenging. But now I understand the importance of great mentors and coaches and actually paying those mentors and coaching and, and really getting the value from that. So uh, I, I'm huge into that now. But a couple years ago, I had said, you're crazy. What are you, I don't need a master. I don't need any coaches, you know. Uh, but it's amazing how much, how much impact I've been able to have uh, by getting over that mental hurdle of being cheap uh, the way I was in the past. That's great. That's great advice. So Heidi, we didn't ask you now. Can you share with us oh, your mentor? <laughs> sure, I'd love to. Actually, um, well, of course, my mother was my first mentor. She was one of the most interesting creative people on the planet. So she kind of instilled that in me being, you know, a little crazy and, and, and inventive, if you will. But my first real mentor that was not someone who I was related to was a woman named Dolores and she was the executive director of the Miramar Pembroke Chamber of Commerce. This was we're talking 30 years ago now. And she came up to me and asked me if I'd be interested in serving on the board of directors. And the reason that impacted me so much is she saw something in me that I did not even see in myself. She saw a leadership quality that I didn't even know I had or that I could even you know, amplify or, uh, you know, take advantage of at any point in time. I, I was very shy. I couldn't even stand up and give my, my introduction at a chamber breakfast. So when someone comes up to you and says, we'd really love you on the board, and I'm thinking, how does this woman even know me? I usually go to the bathroom when self-introductions are happening, <laughs> so I don't even tell my name. And, you know, and it was funny. It changed my life. It changed my entire business. Wow. Um, that small thing that you can do to build someone up I think is a huge thing. I mean I know we talk about you know the mastermind and investing a lot of money but sometimes just a simple thing is just saying you know I think there's something in you that you don't even see in yourself and and helping people to identify that that's obviously what a mentor is all about and then the mastermind takes that to a whole new level um, you know in terms of uh, professionalism and self-development, you know, the human potential as JB would talk about. And I just think that, so that that was my first. I mean, as the rest of you have said, I've had dozens of mentors, but that one probably changed my life the most, other than my mom. 
Yeah, it's, it's really amazing how, you know, having mentors and what, what JB was just saying about investing in yourself and, you know, attending and, and stepping up your game and um, what a dramatic difference that can make in your life. For me, um, I'm a huge uh, Tony Robbins fan, um, love him, and I was uh, started back seeing him on an infomercial back, you know, in the 90s, bought the first, you know, CDs or whatever that he had at the time, they were cassettes probably. Um, and then um, finally, in 2005, I got to go to Unleash the Power Within, and that was actually a life-changing weekend. It was, I have to say, I mean, it inspired me actually to write my book after that. My life just really shifted. So um, for personal development, I'll have to say that Tony was my mentor there. And uh, business-wise, I have to say, now he's a friend of Jeff Walker, too, Frank Kern, somebody I have not met. I love Frank Kern. Did mass control back in, I don't know, was it 2007 or eight? Uh, really changed the way I did ran my business and how I wrote copy and how I marketed and I'm still a huge fan of Frank today. So those are two of uh, there's been so many, but I have to say those are two that really stand out that really impacted my life. Excellent. So this is great. So let me go and I, I kind of went off. Um, I know Heidi with the script here that we wrote. I kind okay. of like messed it up. So I'll start back to question one. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Heidi. Okay. So we'll get back to that. Okay. So Bob, let's start with you. Tell us what you find to be the most effective way to promote your business in 2014. I would say it's a it's a couple of things. One is the the book that we have. You know, I have a, a few books out, but probably the one that has had the biggest impact is The Go Giver, which it was co-authored by the terrific uh, writer John David Mann. Uh, and at this point, the go-giver is a, a great business attraction tool for me. That's sort of the lead to, to everything we do. It's everything <laughs> that brings people back to the website, uh, that gets them involved, that has them subscribe to my Influence and Success Insights that go out every week, uh, that get people on my blog, that have people connect with me on social media. And I utilize a lot of social media to both create and cultivate these relationships. Um, you know, anyone who's ever heard me speak or read any of my books or whatever knows that my, my basic underlying premise for everything is that all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust. And so, to me, everything we do in terms of outbound marketing, my business partner Kathy Zader and me, everything is is around building and maintaining, cultivating, if you will, those relationships. Uh, and the business ends up coming to us. I think what it does, is it creates the environment where we're able to connect with those uh, with whom we want to connect, if that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Definitely, definitely very important, social media. And having that, the fact that you have that book and that becomes the, the foundation for attracting everybody, that's really wonderful. So now I'm going to ask the question over to Susan. You know, the best way that we are utilizing to promote our business in 2014, I would say, is uh, we we rely very heavily on our joint venture partners and our affiliates. Um, <clears throat> I love uh, creating relationships with uh, those guys, and I'm going to say guys because my main niche and market is in the real estate investing arena, and it seems like, you know, oh. I'm one of very few women who have any kind of a, a presence or a profile in that market. Um, so I've cultivated great relationships with the other people in, in that market and rely on them to refer me business. There are some guys who do an awful lot of, you know, big lead generation uh, campaigns. You know, they're really skilled at uh, some of the larger media buys and, you know, we have some AdWords experts that are in our market who are just, they have the ability to drive, you know, thousands and thousands of leads. And so I figure, you know, if I can just, if I can develop really great relationships with these guys, put out excellent products and services that serve the market really, really well, um, and say, look, if you drive me leads and if you endorse what I'm doing, then I will give your customers and clients and your leads a great experience and pay you on time, which is also an important part of that affiliate relationship, uh, then I find that you know I don't have to rely a lot on um, us driving a lot of new leads internally. 
Now, with that said, um, you know, there has to be a follow-up process. So it's not like, you know, we're one and done and hit and run marketers. Um, in our business, we have very intricate and highly segmented um, email follow-up campaigns that are segmented by prospects by product and also by buyers by product. And so we're able to uh, speak very intelligently um, even after they come through our uh, online sales funnels to make recommendations about cross-sales -sell and offer new programs and products and continue that sales products process and that relationship building process with those leads long after they've joined us. Um, outside of that, for our own lead generation efforts, I'd say the two things that are working best for us right now are uh, Facebook marketing <clears throat> and um, uh, the thing specifically with Facebook that's working really well for us is Facebook ad campaigns to automated webinars. That's working really well for us. And, you know, obviously that's, it's kind of a backdoor opt-in, right? Because you're obviously collecting that opt-in when they sign up for the webinar, but you're offering somebody a really um, deep content experience by uh, offering a, a webinar on Facebook and segmenting those groups and marketing to those groups appropriately, um, making sure that you have a market to message match. Um, and we have a blog, you know, uh, uh, we have uh, a blog in the real estate investing niche called the Investor Insights, which uh, was voted in you know, the last couple of years running the number one real estate investing blog. And we're very lucky that we get uh, really great organic traffic from Google. And I've <clears throat> sprinkled some, you know, I'm, I'm never a big fan of like when you go to someone's blog and they've got that big giant, you know, overlay that says opt in or it covers the thing that you're reading or it's really intrusive, you know, and it really interrupts the experience. So I don't necessarily have that type of, uh, uh, you know, opt in opportunity on my blogs. And in fact, when people go to my blog, they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that you're this great marketer and you don't even have an opt in on your blog. But if you actually dive into the content and get into the body of, you know, the, the blog and look at the articles and everything else that we have there, we've very strategically placed, you know, opportunities for people to opt in to various lead funnels that we have uh, scattered throughout the content there. So we're able to capitalize uh, on the organic traffic that we get there. So I'd say the, the first level is going to be joint venture partners and then a really strong email marketing uh, component within our business. And then next level to drive our own leads would be Facebook marketing and also uh, organic traffic to our blog. Excellent. That is excellent. That is great. Thank you, Susan. Sure. So next I'm going to put the question to Kathleen. Well, um, first of all, I want to say that what Susan said about paying her affiliates on time, she is spot on. <laughs> I, I wrote her the other day. She sent me a nice check the other, recently, and I, I said, you know, you are probably the best I've ever worked with. Because I not sent you a five-figure check the other oh, day. I know. It was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. And, and she put a personal note in it, and she really she paid on time, all of that. It was, it was huge, which... You know, that's a big part of it because if you burn bridges with the very people that can introduce you to a market, you're, you're done. It's that simple. And what we're implementing in the coming year, uh, actually some of Susan's sales funnels, uh, I've gone through her training, it's phenomenal and uh, definitely works. And we're also getting into podcasting. I'm launching my podcast show in a few weeks and we've been working on it for probably now about six weeks where we're laying the foundation. We're getting a whole bunch of stuff in the hopper so that when we hit, we hit big. And that's something that when I work with people, I make sure that they really lay their foundation in a way that they can have a big bang in the community. And uh, another thing we're going to be doing more of is the Google Hangouts. I'm doing live events and really partnering with the right people, getting in bed with the right people, where you strategically say, okay, who do I want to introduce to my market? Who do I want to be seen with? And it's not about any uh, being arrogant or snobbish. It's really about being strategic in how you put your message out to the market and to quit playing small. Um, so th those are some of the things, especially the podcasting. I'm uh, actually learning from John Lee Dumas, who is brilliant at what he does. And it was well worth the investment into his program. Uh, and I'm also in some private forums where I'm building those relationships that will allow me to take my business to the next level. Wonderful. We were just talking, JB and Heidi and I, yesterday about John Lee Dumas and his Amazing. podcast, Entrepreneur on Fire, and he does 
I think over a hundred grand a month with that. So he's got podcasters. Just for the, you know, sitting on the phone talking to his yeah. friends and kicking back and, and making over a million a year on that. Yeah, amazing. Great, I love his brilliant. podcast. He's very talented. He's and, great. And he's, he's great. And he's got a great course there. So that's terrific. So let, let's go turn the question over to JB. Well, you know, I'm I'm not the best marketer in the world. You know, that's what's so great, and I, I can't say that too much anymore because my mastermind will kill me. But um, really, it's just been about putting great content out there. You know, John's a good friend of mine. I was one of his fifth interview uh, when he was just getting started, which is kind of funny. So I love John, uh, and he, he when we when he first started, he came to me for a lot of info because you know we started podcasting in 2000 and. Gosh, it must have been eight or two thousand nine. I've done two thousand so far, so uh, wow. I've done a lot of podcasting, and that's how we really build our business. When we got featured on iTunes, we went to top, you know, top twenty-five in the world, and so we. My claim to fame is we beat Oprah and Ellen. Which was pretty <laughs> cool. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was really cool. And we went from, you know, in those beginning days, you know, I had four hundred people listening, and and you know, I, I my main thing is. Is just being real and authentic and putting great content out there, and it'll, it'll work, and, and you'll drive traffic. It just takes time. You know, you got to be willing to get through those stages where you have three people listening, and instead of having the attitude, well, there's only three people listening, love those three people, because if you love those three people, they'll turn into six, and those six will turn into 12, and those 12 will turn into 24, and then you get to the exponential growth, which is where we're at now, and, and you know, we're able to charge for our podcast now. We don't do it for free except for Mondays. We use a premium mode. But that's where our traffic, you know, really has come from. And now, obviously, all the other means. And what's crazy is we've never even done affiliate marketing. Um, we're just moving to a new platform now. Uh, we're building all of our, our software, and we're moving into some of those areas to start doing some affiliate uh, marketing and, and start uh, getting some JV partners uh, that I have some pretty good ones out there. Gary Vannerchuk's a good friend of mine that we've had on the show. Dr. Dyer was last week. So it's about time we get into that area. Um, but all that has come from just doing daily work every day. And it's funny, we're, we're, I'm working with a, a person that, uh, right now, Michael Adias. He's a big documentary director in L.A., and we're doing a doc, some documentary work. And he's been with me for, since the beginning, and he was laughing at me yesterday. We were on the phone, and he says, you know, I remember when I listened, I'd laugh at you, and you'd misspell words. And, you know, <laughs> and I was like, I don't know why I'm even listening to this guy, you know? <laughs> And it, it's just, you know, the thing is our traffic comes from putting great content out there, being willing to make mistakes, and just doing it every day. That's really what's, what drives our traffic and just being real because there's millions of people out there and they'll find you. They either love you or hate you. And, you, you know, work with the ones that love you and move on from them. And, and you know, learn from, from somebody like Bob Berg who's awesome, who's on this hangout right now and dealing with people and, you follow his stuff, you really start to understand that the internet is just the word of mouth, uh, you know, the word of mouth on speed. It just happens a little faster. And if you can use those tools, you're going to grow your business. So. Great advice. Thank you, JB. Heidi? Oh, well, I love this question. Well, I want to acknowledge Bob first because um, one of the books that impacted me early on was Endless Referrals. And I bought the book and then I got to meet the author. And I'll tell you how excited I was because I had no idea that 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 was possible, that you could be so close to somebody, not only geographically, but be able to be in the same community. So Bob was speaking at the Florida Speakers Association. I went up and introduced myself, and I don't know, we just became great friends since then. So Bob, your book changed my life in many ways because it is all about building relationships. So my main marketing um, tool that I've used for years probably is referral-based. Um, I really believe in you know giving and receiving referrals, and I've used that model over and over again. I love networking. I, you can find me at an event at least twice, three times a week. I like to get out of my office and put clothes on, <laughs> you know, put makeup on once in a while. And so, like the Google Hangouts, make it kind of force you to have to like do that anyway. Um, and and social media is probably my second favorite thing um, and we're going to talk and that's the next question that we have is about social media but I have really built quite a um, a lot of relationships through the social media platforms and and I think I want to mention to event planning um, event production I know Christine and I are doing the day with the masters I've been doing events for years and I built a, a huge following uh, for women in e-commerce, uh, for a lot of different things, just by producing and participating in events. So I think events are a, a great format, and you all know that because you're going to be at our event. 
you know that's a great way to get to a, a group of people that are your are people of like mind that they they get you they want more of you and they can't wait to see you so I think events are a, another uh, wonderful avenue that uh, I want to do more of in the, the coming years wonderful thank and you, how about you Christina well for me I would say hands down it's social media I mean I, I love social media my favorite site would be probably LinkedIn um, and Facebook and Google Plus so um, doing hangouts like this, I am also launching a podcast, and of course I love events. So, but I would say social media has had the greatest impact on my business. It's where I just you know I have people who you know clients that contact me just from seeing me on social media. So it's really effortless. So it's why I'm such a proponent of everybody you know building their followings and their tribes on social media. So I just said my favorite social media site. Well, Heidi, would you like to ask this question? Because I'm like kind of pondering oh, I, the question. I just, <laughs> Go ahead. Everybody to weigh in on social media. And I think we're going to start with Kathleen. Tell us your favorite social media site or channel. Okay. Why. I'm going to bust myself. Facebook is my favorite, even though it's not necessarily the one that I get the highest level clients from. But I do get some pretty high level clients from Facebook. But what I love about it is I get to go out there and just be who I am, put my thoughts up, I have people that agree with that, don't agree with it, you know, whatever I'm saying. And I did one today about somebody finding a penny and, you know, how God blesses us and I had somebody say, God has nothing to do with it and I said, that's your opinion, this is my opinion. So it really gives us a platform to be who we want to be. That's, that's what my experience has been. And I just love the interaction that I can have with people, but I also have learned to discipline myself to spend only certain times during the day in Facebook because you can get lost in it. But I have found it's a great way to build relationships. I would agree. Bob, how about you? Twitter and Facebook are my two favorites. I have a, a, a presence on, on LinkedIn and on Google+, Plus, but I, I don't uh, utilize them as much as I probably should. This year I'll do more on LinkedIn than I have. Uh, I find Twitter and Facebook kind of suit my style a lot more, but they're different in, in terms of the way you communicate, obviously, uh, and yet they seem to me to, to make it, I think, easier. They're more in my wheelhouse, if you will, in terms of being able to build relationships. Uh, now, I, I, Christina said that with social media that it's, that it's easy. I wouldn't, I admire her that she can make it, <laughs> I admire her in a lot of ways, but one way that she can make it, for me it's not necessarily, because it can take a lot of time for me, um, and and I believe, I agree with Kathleen, you got to be really careful, it can, it can really just kind of take you in, but, uh, but I think those two particular media make it very easy to engage with others, it, easy in terms of the functional functionability to do that, not easy in terms of time. Time, it's always a struggle with me. I'll, um, you know, people often say, well, how do you, you know, how have you been able to really uh, keep up with people and engage on, with people and do this and fit all your other things in? What's your secret? My secret's I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a lot of time. If someone else knows, tell me. But, um, but, I, but I think those, you know, I'll, I'll say this too, and I've heard a lot of people say, well, you really just can't create deep relationships on social media. I disagree. I think you can. Oh, uh, it's just like doing it uh, in a different way. But I've made some great friends, clients, friends, both, without ever speaking with them on the phone, not until it got to a certain point maybe that, that it, it went to that other. No. Uh, you know, again, we go back to all things being equal. People do business with and refer business to not computers and not social media platforms, but to those people in front of the computer. And all you need to be able to do is say, how do I utilize this medium in order to provide great value to this other person? And if you can do that, you can create great relationships on social media. Bob, I would totally agree with you. Um, I met a lady on Facebook a few years ago, and then she invited me to a conference. We're now best friends. And we met, and we couldn't wait to get it to meet each other in person because we had met on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So I think I think you're absolutely right. You can develop great, deep relationships with people. You know, you, it, it but it does take time. You're right, uh, JB. What about you? 
Uh, I love, um, you know, I love all social media. I think it's great. It's just, a, you know, to me, I think it's the greatest time to be alive. I mean, these tools are just amazing. I mean, I was a guy in my bathrobe with a dog barking in the background doing a podcast, and it's been able to build my dreams. You know, I anybody that says it's not the greatest time to be alive is crazy um, because all you got to do is do a little bit of work, reach out, be honest, have integrity, put value in the universe, and it comes back to you. It's just awesome. And uh, if I had to pick two, it would be Facebook and Twitter. Um, you know, we're, I'm big into being a resource, and so now I have somebody that helps me with that. Um, so from the resource aspect, I have a person on staff who provides resources, which is links or photos or, you know, good quality positive content on all our mediums. And then my job is to build the relationship. So as we're providing those resources throughout the day on the various social media platforms, I'm in there connecting with people and talking with people to build the relationship. So. I, I love it. it. Yes, it's taken some work, some strategy, some time, as Bob has said. Um, but we've really been able to put together some really nice networks within all of them. But really, Facebook is awesome for relationships. It's where people go to hang out and cool people, so we go hang out with them. And then Twitter, for me, is really a communication platform, and it's gotten me away from email and a lot of other things. And, and it really works for me to streamline my communication. Excellent. And how about you, Susan? Thank you, Jamie. I would say the my two favorite are Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, you know, I use. I was a, a kind of an early adopter for LinkedIn advertising. You know, when they first launched that ad platform, and uh, what I found was that for the target market that I was reaching, or that I was hoping to reach. Uh, it worked out really well for us. A um, little bit different customer on Facebook and a little bit different lead on Facebook, but certainly, uh, you know, I we found success with both of them. Um, the one, you know, thing about Facebook that, uh, uh, and, and I agree with everything that you guys just said. You know, I uh, I had met three women only on Facebook, and we started a business together a couple of years to, ago. And I think it was a year before we actually ever got together, like in person, and <laughs> met each other. And we, you know, when we finally got together, we were like, "This is so bizarre, right?" It's like I felt like these women were like my sisters. We were that close, you know, working together every day and seeing each other virtually, like we're seeing each other now. And um, it was—it's just a remarkable platform. I tell you, you know, my model <clears throat> in my real estate investing division. Uh, is uh, changing a little bit in that we are now uh, publishing other experts in real estate investing and leveraging their expertise to join the Investor Insights team um, because you know there comes a time when uh, you're going to come to the end of your expertise you know and if I keep putting out course after course on other areas then it's just it's you know it's not going to work uh, I have a, a real strong um, a real strong belief that I only want to teach and instruct on those things that I've personally done and had success with. And so the reason why I bring this up in conjunction with social media is that I watch other people on social media who specifically like with real estate investing for this project with the Investor Insights who are building a platform who are really transparent and sharing their successes and their some of their you know their failures the things that didn't go so well uh, the people that have high engagement and uh, so I'm starting to reach out to those people to ask them if they'd like to join our team and have us uh, do what we do best and put together marketing funnels and upsell downsell sequences for them and you know help them create front end products and upsell products and coaching programs uh, so that they can uh, increase their reach and we can promote them to you know the list that we've built and um, through our blog and so it's been a fantastic resource to kind of keep an eye on people who are doing it right and who are building a platform that would be a perfect fit for that type of uh, that arrangement. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Kat, uh, Chris, Christine, I already know the answer, but go ahead. Everybody well, else may not. <laughs> yeah, I think I answered it, but I think you know, I would say yeah, LinkedIn. I, I love LinkedIn. LinkedIn, I find the targeting is really terrific, especially if you're you know looking for other like business owners and you know business to business is fantastic. And I really love Google Plus too. And I know a lot of people you know don't know how to use Google Plus or they're confused by it. And I think it's really going to be the place to be, especially with all of the uh, SEO you get when you post and if you have authorship to your blog you get ranked higher in the search engines. So I, I highly recommend Google Plus as well. But on, and Facebook, of course, I love Facebook. Facebook is just a great place. So I would say those are my three favorites. All of the above. Uh, 
For me, I think it's Twitter. I just love Twitter. I love the, the, the speed of it. I love the, the fact that you can reach so many people. You can build a tribe uh, pretty quickly on Twitter. It takes a little longer on Facebook. I love, I love them all. I'm a social media, um, I don't know what the word is, but I just love social media. And, and I love, not only every time I learn something, I love to share it with other people so that they feel the same power and the same... Um, satisfaction that I have gotten out of it. I, I think probably I've made the most money though with LinkedIn. And I say that because I've gotten more leads and clients through LinkedIn, either directly or through referrals from somebody else on LinkedIn than any other. Now, when it comes to product sales, my Twitter account, I've sold more of my books through Twitter, through my promotion of Twitter than anything. And I loved when LinkedIn used to have the events because we used to we used to get a lot of people attending events when yeah. they had that. And I, I feel bad that they don't have that anymore. I don't think Facebook has really um, been able to um, capitalize on the events, even though we can put the events up there, and, and I like that too. I, I don't think that it's the same market. So uh, I think probably for me my two favorite would be LinkedIn and Twitter, but I absolutely love Google Plus. I love the fact that it's new and I'm learning every day. And Christina is amazing. Um, we've taught each other a lot of different things and I've learned so much about LinkedIn from Christina and I'm now learning about Google Plus. So, so we work very well together when we do our social media programs because she takes on the, the Google Plus and the, and the LinkedIn and I do the Facebook and the Twitter and we have a lot of fun and uh, we seem to make a difference and you know that's what it's all about is uh, helping other people. So thank you. Uh, I'm going to have to refer now to my teleprompter, <laughs> which is my other computer for the next question. <laughs> so the question we have is, um, you know, we talk a lot about the online marketing and all the things that we're doing to build our business, but what about offline marketing? Uh, I'm going to kind of just throw this out there, and whoever wants to chime in first, um, tell us if you're doing anything in offline marketing, and if so, what you're doing. Um, to promote your business. Well, I'll chime in. I'll okay, chime in. Exactly. Okay. Actually, we recently started going back to direct mail. Uh, we're doing a postcard campaign for an event that I'm doing in May. It's my 60th birthday bash and a three-day conference. Oh. And so we're, yeah, happy birthday to me. And uh, you're supposed to say you couldn't possibly be, but I'll show you. No, no, no. But quite seriously, we are doing direct mail, and I recently, after a huge sabbatical from Chamber of Commerce's, I joined my local Chamber of Commerce, and I actually have to tell you, I was shocked at how well known I was in my local market, because I had done nothing but LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, those types of things. Go to my chamber meetings, and people are going, oh, you're that author lady, and it's like, yeah, I am that author lady. Um, and I'm finding that building those relationships locally are very beneficial, too. So. Those would be the two things. And I wanted to add something. I've been listening to everybody talk, and we all have successful businesses, and we're talking about five-figure uh, affiliate checks, seven-figure businesses. And for anybody that is watching this to realize we all started at the beginning. You know, when I remember years ago when I looked at these people that were just knocking it out of the park, and I'd go, oh, my gosh, if I could ever be able to do that. And now I'm doing it, but it took time. It took listening to the masters, if you will. It took being willing to implement discipline. All of the things that we've talked about today, I think, is very important for people to keep in mind instead of saying, oh, I could never do that, or you're lucky because. And luck is because we invested a lot of time, money, and effort, and we hang out with really cool people. Excellent. You so, said it perfectly. I All can't right. There's um, no way you're 60. <laughs> Not yet. Give me six weeks. That's right. No way. Give me six weeks. Hey, 60 is the new 40. No, 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 no. It's the new 30. <laughs> it's the new 30. I'm good. I'm in. <laughs> and just just to go on what Kathleen said, I agree 100%. You know, that's the foundation of my entire business is is helping people believe again. You know, and it's yeah. it's tough. You know, I mean, and I understand. You put a blog up there and three people read it, or you do a podcast and nobody comes. I was there. I quit a hundred times. You know, but I, for some reason I got up and did it again the next day. And I agree. I mean, if you're just getting started, it's it's challenging. There's a lot to learn. I, I on LinkedIn just popped up the other day that my business is nine years old. I, I, I couldn't really believe it, you know, and the first five or six years of that were very painful. And 
now it's going to be a lot of fun, but you just got to put the time in and learn. That's the thing. I mean, that's the biggest part for me was getting over becoming cheap. So I started going to the little <laughs> events that were free on YouTube, and I started paying a little more and a little more, and I started getting more and more information. That's what really got me over the top was listening. Excellent. Thanks, JB. How about how about Bob? You are you doing anything offline, Bob, to market your business? You know, it's it, I don't really at this point. <laughs> uh, I I don't do a lot of you know I don't do direct mail anyway. You know, even in terms of um, even in terms of um, you know online. So uh, I guess what. I guess the things that I that that we do, such as having the uh, the blog, the influence and success insights, the the social media, I just do those so constantly and consistently uh, it, it, that it's just at this point, you know, it's it's what I do and it serves the purpose. Uh, you know, it, it it's so funny, and I almost hate to say this because it opens up a whole other can of worms, but I don't want to do anything person to person at this point. <laughs> Bob, can I, can I just disagree with you there? Just a little bit. Because you feel, you're still speaking all over the world. That's, the that's thing. offline marketing, honey. If there I is, know. there is what. No, I, I know. And you're, and you're right. <laughs> People tend to think that I'm an extrovert. And that, you know, that I want to go out and do all these things and be with people. I don't. <laughs> I'm trying to speak less. Oh, my I God. You are call... MC, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> I have what I call my one-mile radius where I live in Jupiter, Florida. <laughs> Within one mile, I've got everything that I need <laughs> to be totally happy. In fact, a couple weeks ago, you know, we have a, a mastermind group. Uh, I, I'm in JB's other mastermind group, not the one with Jeff, but the, the other one. And we have some great people in that group. And we have people from, you know, Terry Brock and, and, and Gina Carr in Orlando down to Bruce Turkel in, in Miami and, and everybody in between. We, about once every other month, we go to each other's home and the person hosts it. And it's a great day of masterminding. That is the one time that I voluntarily leave my home. Outside my mile, my my one mile radius. So so no, I I pretty much at this point, other than when I'm traveling because I have to because I'm not that good that the conventions come to me. I have to go to them. Other than that, no, nah, no, nah, rather just do it online at this point. And I gotta tell you, Bob, Nico heard your voice and he came running in here and he's sitting waiting for you to show back up. Uh, <laughs> my lap, my lap. Let's see Nico. We want to see Nico. Oh, <laughs> oh. Hi, Nico. Uncle Bob. Oh, I don't know if you can see him. Where's Nico? Where's we'll Nico? Oh, he is such he's a cool. back there. That's wonderful. Uh, all right, Susan, your turn. We're running out of time, so I want to make sure everybody gets. Yeah, I, you know, I'm with Kathleen. We um, last year we started doing some direct mail in our business, and that's worked out really well for us. Um, and you know, I'm kind of with Bob. <laughs> you know, I I come from uh, uh, my corporate background was a national sales trainer for Hertz Rent a Car, and I was on the road three weeks a month. I would leave uh, my home on a Sunday afternoon and fly to some destination city in North America and I'd stay there until Friday and come home Friday night and then I'd do it all over again the next week and the next week and then I'd have one week in the office. And that's one of the main reasons why I left that corporate gig behind and started my first business because I said, you know, I, I don't enjoy traveling that much. Um, and that was why internet marketing really appealed to me. And uh, so, you know, I'm like JB. When I first started, uh, my office, my home office is in my, literally in my bedroom. And every day I would just put on my bathrobe with my dogs and walk over, you know, about six feet to the to the chair and do what I needed to do in order to grow my business. And it only got awkward when I had to hire my first person. And it was weird when they had to work in my bedroom. But... Uh, <laughs> That was when we decided 
hmm, maybe an office would be a, an okay idea now, which is still <laughs> in my one mile radius, Bob. So, uh, yeah. So I'd say you know direct mail. We do, I do some uh, occasionally some local speaking. You know I don't have to go too far. And then uh, certainly uh, with regard to speaking uh, at this you know awesome uh, event that we have coming up at the end of April, uh, I just pretty much go wherever Kathleen tells me to go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, and Kathleen. it's always been good advice. <laughs> I love it. Oh, that's great. Okay. Uh, they, wait a minute. Do we? Okay, we didn't lose you. Okay, Christina, your turn. Uh, well, Any I questions? would have to say um, for offline, it would definitely be events. Um, you know, I'd like to do luncheons. We have the South Florida Business Owners Networking Groups both on Facebook and LinkedIn, and I like to do. Yeah, bring everybody off, you know, from online to offline, and somebody can meet each other and network. So I would have to say that would be the form of offline marketing that I like. I, I would agree people. with you. And and Kathleen, you mentioned uh, something about chambers. I I was I haven't been involved in a chamber in about seven years, and I just joined two. And the same thing happened mm -hmm. to me, and it was so amazing. I had a gentleman come up to me who. I kind of thought he was a stalker, actually, because <laughs> very strange. Well, on Facebook. Stalkers was, on Facebook. So. <laughs> he, he was on my LinkedIn page, and he wrote this. You know, kind of sometimes you get these messages, and you're thinking, oh, they're they're not real people. Turns out he was the nicest guy. He just was one of those guys that likes to open up his heart, I guess, if you will. Anyway, so I met him at a chamber breakfast, and then I met a couple other people. So it's really kind of cool that. Uh, sometimes what's old is new again and I think that that's really a message that people have to understand is you know maybe it didn't work for a while but you know it's a good idea to sometimes revisit those things that at one point in your business were probably very successful I was president of two chambers of commerce I was very involved in my community and when I was my business was unbelievable I was doing the seven figures and just having a great time but I was working too hard and I was going to too many events and not not home enough but now I'm just have a nice balance and maybe two events a week are enough for me and and I don't do any traveling I stopped speaking anywhere but locally a few years ago now if someone will pay me a lot of money I'll go but I, I just don't and if it's a destination I want to go to but I don't want to go to New Hampshire in January ever again and I love New Hampshire. They have the, I love New Hampshire's motto is live free or die. I think it should be our motto for the United States. Yeah, so, exactly. so, you know, but I just don't want to go there in January. So, so really the local stuff is working really well for me. And I think, Christina, I know we're running about out of time, but we do have, what, one or two more questions? Yeah, about two more. So you're, okay. you're next. Thank you, everyone. Do you want to ask the next question? No, you go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, okay, when business is stagnant or falling off, how do you stay motivated? Let's start with JB on this one. <laughs> well, I had some technical issues. Can you guys hear me now? Am I yeah. still all right? Okay, you guys are coming in like a robot, so this is actually really cool. I see. I, I've got a robotic vibe going right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Nico's like, I can't hear Bob anymore. Aww. <laughs> I love um, <laughs> Well, when you know, for me, it's really about the team now. I mean, I'm, I'm. It's funny. I hear this reoccurring theme about not wanting to leave the house. I'm there. I mean, I'm so introverted. I'm like the cave person. Like, <laughs> I, I never want to. I'm either down. I have a place in Bogota. I'm either down there or here, and it's like I just want to get away from people. Um, but no, when when things are down, you know, we we really, it's about the team or uh, the people that are involved. So for me, it's like we we look for ways to create value and. You know, I, I got some of the best coaching I've ever gotten in my life when I interviewed um, uh, Dr. Dyer and Reed Tracy. Reed Tracy is the president of Hay House. Reed told me that Louis LaHaye, Louis LaHaye, had never even asked one day about money. Um, he runs the business. He's the CEO of the president. All she's ever done is found ways to put value in the world and help people. And same thing when I was talking to Dr. Dyer. He said the same thing. I, cause I, he goes, how's your business doing, JB? And I said... You know, Wayne, it's it's very challenging. It's you know, personal development's a very difficult business. And he, he on the phone he on the phone kind of went quiet and he says, Well, it hasn't been for me. And so I think you gotta be very cautious of uh, your mind kind of moving that it's getting difficult or things are going bad. And if you can keep yourself just putting value and helping people, it'll come around and the business will grow and grow and grow. And 
I, I just learned so much from my mentors to go back to that, that, hey, instead of focusing on the negative, focus on value, focusing on helping people and you can't lose. Great answer. And if I may go next, because actually my business is so good, I have a premier client call coming up, so I've got to I've got to cut this short. But uh, could I go ahead and answer next? Sure. Um, okay, um, I, I have to agree with what uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer said. It's like you don't focus on it being bad, because actually one of the greatest turning points for my business was when I was fully in service to my mother during her caretaking. And it was a two-year period that I was by her hospital bedside, and I was just, I would ask for guidance. I would say, okay, what do I need to do next? And I created a membership program. I, it was a low-priced membership program, brought a whole bunch of people into it. We generated over 100000 the first year with that membership program while I was my mother's caretaker. And I have people say, well, you just don't get it. I have this problem or that problem. And it's like, no, you just don't get it. You have to really know that if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you show up and really I like to be guided that's kinda of how I run my life and also I know Susan's probably going to talk about this multiple streams of revenue not relying on one pool of revenue because if that dries up then you have other things and always being willing to change in a moment's notice being flexible enough that if you notice something happening that you can shift around and a lot of people they watch this the boat sinking and they wait until it's in the water and they go oh shoot now what am I going to do and instead planning ahead and really putting your systems in place but for me the greatest turning point in my business was when I was taking care of my mom and also I'm with all of you I'm an introvert I don't want to go out necessarily but when I do I love it and I'm really looking forward to seeing all of you end of April and with that I've got to say goodbye because my clients gonna be waiting for me love you all thank you so much Kathleen Bye. Bye. thank you Kathleen Bye, -bye. Bye Kathleen okay who's next Oh, Susan. Ah, okay. Yeah, I. You know, she was right. That's exactly what I was going to say. Um, I, I set my business up very strategically, and um, I realized that my overarching goal. You know, I obviously it should go without saying that I started this business to serve people and put great value into the world. And um, in fact, our company. I can't like turn around the computer to like show you what the words that we have on the wall, but I have our. Um, our company motto and it's have fun create value and I always say that the fun comes first for a reason uh, so for me it has to be fun or I'm gonna lose interest pretty quickly and uh, luckily you know it's the money is nice but it's never been about the money for me really it's been more about freedom and I think again that's why the uh, kind of building my business online and utilizing the technology that's available to us now has really been appealing. But with that said, um, I'm a huge, huge proponent of systems, processes, automation, uh, multiple streams of income so that, you know, when if I have to bow out of my business for any reason, um, the sales just keep coming in and there's a I know that there's a baseline of income that's going to come in on a monthly basis whether or not you know I put anything else into the world or not and that gives me that freedom that uh, you know reduces stress it allows me to be the best creator that I can be and deliver the best experience for my customers that I possibly can and have fun Excellent. Great. and Bob did you answer the question yet I didn't. Mine, mine will be a very short answer because they all gave gave wonderful answers. When things get stagnant and things get slow as they do sometimes, you know, I don't think it's a fun thing at all. Uh, but I think you got to just work through it, and you've got to again go back to putting your focus in the right place. Uh, we often say that money is an echo of value. It's the thunder, the values like which means the, the focus needs to be on providing value to others and the money is, is simply a, a very natural and direct result of the value you create. Um, and that's fine and well and, that, and that's true. Uh, but there are times when business is business and it, it, um, it is, can be frustrating and it can be uh, uh, annoying and it can be whatever it needs to be. It's not always the most fun thing and you've got to just work through it. I think that's what it comes down to because the alternative is you don't work through it and nothing happens. Well, I think a lot of it is mindset. You know, I, I absolutely think it is. I have found in my business when things are kind of slow, I find it the best time to be learning. And that's when I'll take out the books, listen to the tapes, watch the, 
the uh, the people that I follow religiously and just absorb myself more in the learning. And I pick up a phone and I'll call a, a mentor or a coach and I'll say, hey, this is what's going on. What should I be doing now? And, you know, you get really great advice from people who've been there, done that, and have overcome it or, you know, gone to the other side of the mountain, so to speak. So I think that having, you know, a group of people that you can call on or even one person, like a mentor or a mastermind, um, helps a great deal and it's helped my business because I've had times and we've all had tragedies in our life and you know some of us handle them better than others some of us kinda of go into a shell if you will and uh, when you come out of that shell and you find out you have no business left that's when you have to start saying okay what do I need to do to get back to where I was and make it even better so I think that um, having people and that's why we're so excited that you're gonna be with us because you're going to be those people for many people down in South Florida, so thank you. And I know, Christina, you want to answer this question too, don't you? I, I have to agree with everything that you've all said, um, especially what you, Bob, just said about you know, it's mindset and you have to power through. And I think sometimes when things are slow and you have that lull, it becomes the perfect time where you're kind of quiet and you're listening and you're maybe looking for something where the greatest ideas come. When you're really busy and everything's really frantic and chaotic, you know, you can overlook a lot of new things that you can, you know, learn and put into your business. So it's, it's you know, there's ups and downs, but I think you have to take advantage of those quiet times um, to emerge and, you know, uh, develop something exciting for your business. So that being said, um, I want to just quickly move on now because we're out of time here. I know you guys are all really busy, but we wanted to ask each of you to tell us just briefly about, you know, what you're going to be here on April 25th. Um, for a day with the masters, and if you can explain to everybody why they should come, why should they should they come to see you and listen to your program? So we can start with uh, we we'll go back to JB. I don't see JB in the room. Oh, okay. I think no, there he is. There he is. Yeah. Yay! Go ahead, JB. Sorry, I, and can you rephrase the question? Because I just got nailed. I, oh, I, no problem. What we were saying was, um, you know, with the day with the masters on April twenty fifth. Can you tell us why people should come see you and, and what you're going to be talking about, what your program's going to be like, and you know why they should come on that day? I love it. I love it. Well, first, they should come see everybody on this panel, not me. I mean, that's the there's just so much wisdom here, and uh, there's so much to learn. And, and Kathleen, who just jumped off because she's so busy, it's awesome. And Susan, you guys are just, the energy is just unbelievable. So that that's why they should, be, should come. Um, the reason they should come see me is because they can see how many failures I've had and how I've built my business. I mean, if, if I can do it and you need to come see and meet me so you really understand this, that's why they usually wheel me out because they go, that's the guy. If he can do it, I know I can do it. So come there, get the great wisdom from everybody there, and come and get the inspiration from me to know that you can do it and start believing again. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have a lot of great energy there. You need to be there. Thank That's you. incredible, JB. I, I love how, how you're so down to earth and honest and you've got such great success, but yet you're willing to share your failures and, and let everybody know exactly what you went through. So because they can they can relate to that. We can all relate to it. And it's it's really, really great. So next let's go over to Susan. I'm just gonna get really strategic, you know. Um my presentation is a, a, a case study in my actual business. It's forty my forty three thousand five hundred and eighty seven dollars in seven days automated wow. funnel formula strategy. And it's something you know. I said before, like you know, with regard to speaking, it's like I just go where Kathleen tells me to go. Um, you know, this is this is stuff that I was just doing in my business, right, to run my business, and it's something that allowed me to have exponential revenue growth, to be able to triple my customer value, to be able to, you know, in from 2012 to 2013, uh, go from 592,000 in revenue to one and a half million dollars in revenue. So it's had to, this specific strategy that I'm really gonna, you know, be totally transparent about and show you exactly one of my funnels in my business and, you know, exactly what we did in terms of building it, um, what the pages look like, uh, so that people can replicate this in uh, in their businesses as well. Well, um, just gonna be really transparent and share that with people. And you know, it's and it's only because uh, Kathleen mentioned that we were in a mastermind a, a couple years ago, and we were in one last year as well. And uh, you know, I we were just hanging out one night and um, chatting in a hotel room after a live mastermind 
in our pajamas with some other people at the Mastermind drinking wine. Uh, Kathleen was drinking tea because she doesn't drink. But I had my phone sitting on the coffee table in the hotel room and it just kept going cha-ching, 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 cha-ching with orders. And it got to be really distracting and pretty soon everybody was like, okay, time out. What is going on with your phone? Right? You, What's happening? And I'm like, oh, it's just orders. I'm sorry. I'll turn it off. And they're like, no, no, no. You need to tell us what you're doing that's making those orders come in when you're sitting here in a hotel room in your pajamas drinking wine. And <laughs> so I I said okay and really you know it was the basis of me explaining to them exactly how to set that up in their businesses that I said you know maybe this will benefit other people as well so um, uh, you know I'm so excited to be a part of this group. I am excited, you know, to to meet all of you. Um, I'm new to this, you know, the marketing training side of things. I'm coming from, hey, this is just what's working in my business, and I can't wait just to to come out to Fort Lauderdale from Denver where it's snowing today. What is up with that? Uh, <laughs> And uh, share what I know, share what's working in my business, and hopefully deliver great value to everybody. So come out and just join in the energy of everybody. I love the vibe that we have going on, and I think that's definitely going to carry over to uh, April 25th, and I can't wait to be a part of it. Well, thank you, Susan. We're like super excited to, to hear you on, on the rail and you know pull back the curtain on how you made forty three thousand dollars in a week, and I it's that's really really <laughs> incredible. And these things that you put into place, you know, we all want to know this, you know. So everybody, when you come, bring plenty of paper, take notes. I mean, this is going to be really incredible. So yep. let's pass it over to Bob. Well, Christina, if someone's listening to this or watching this. And what they're looking to do is to have a business in which it's going to be fun, in which it's going to provide great value to the lives of a lot of people, and and which is going to be very, very, very profitable. Then they've just, you know, they've learned from from you and from Heidi and from Susan and from JB and from Kathleen today already just great information and think about this being concentrated and focused during this day of learning I, I can't imagine anyone who wants those things in their life not coming to this event and I'm honored to be the master of ceremonies so I get to introduce everybody on stage and then I get to sit back in the audience and take notes and not only is it the, the learning you're gonna get specifically uh, and the behind the curtain things, but you're going to meet these people. And despite what we said about the one mile radius and all those things, <laughs> there's also nothing like actually meeting the people who are doing it and connecting with each other and having that energy flow throughout the room and from one another. So the, the learning and the fun and the connection and the profit and everything else that's good about business is going to take place during this day. So I just hope everyone gets there and brings someone else with them and has a, an absolutely terrific time. Amen. Yes, definitely. We're honored to have you as our Master of Ceremonies, Bob. Yes. We're yeah. really, really excited. We're honored to have all of you guys. This is just incredible for Heidi and I to, to have the quality. And it, this is just amazing. I mean, I am so, I'm personally so excited to see all of you speak. So it's, uh, it's really going to be a really, really incredible day. I just, I just want to say one thing. When Christina and I were planning this, and we shared this with you in your podcast, um, we looked at people that we wanted to learn from. And you're all on that list. You're all at the top of that list. So we're excited because in addition to us gaining some amazing knowledge, we're able to share our own expertise in social media with, with our audience. And uh, I said earlier that... Uh, Christina uh, is the master in LinkedIn and Google Plus, and I, I do an awful lot in Facebook. I would consider myself a master in Twitter, and I really love my, – my motto on my wall is live, learn, and pass it on because I really believe that that's what I'm here for. And so I've really done that all my life, and having this – opportunity another opportunity to share what I've learned that has worked what I've seen other people do that has worked is it's just it's amazing um, I'm a very high content speaker I'm not really a motivational speaker I believe in delivering lots of content to fill your head and then you're gonna go away going oh wow there's just so much where do I begin but usually it, what happens is afterwards you'll figure out where to begin it's just you kind of need to have all the information so that you know what's available to you. And I, and I think that's what Christine and I are going to do in our session. And Christine, I know you have some ideas on why people should attend. 
Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, we're with, with what both of our we're doing more with the social media. Um, I get so excited personally. Like, I want to share, just like you said about uh, live, learn, and share. Um, when I learn something new on social media, the first thing I want to do is share it. I know I sent you an email last night, Heidi. You know, I found a Google Plus loophole with events. You know, something yeah. like, oh my God, this is so exciting. I think I'm the only person that gets excited about these things. Like <laughs> apps and it's like when I find a way to do something on social media, it's like, I don't know, it really gives me a rush. <laughs> it's like a high. It's like, oh my God. I know, I'm a geek, right? <laughs> I, I like to share that. I'm going to share I'm those things with you guys. Hand. You know, and I, and I love that, to be at my presentations, to give you guys these inside strategies and things that you're normally not going to see on how to do these certain things and to um, build your tribe and build your followers and, um, and get to your target market. So I think everybody, you guys need to come, obviously, to see these incredible speakers. We're going to have a wonderful day. Our events are a lot of fun. Um, we dance, so be prepared to get on stage in between, not to scare you, but in between our breaks. Uh, it's very high energy. We have an energy, um, uh, what would we call her, Heidi, an energist? Or she's going to be energy leading. Coach. She's going to get up yeah. and get people moving. You know? Get everybody so dancing in between. Dancing, yeah. Right. Yeah. If you ever been to Tony Robbins' event or anything, you know, everybody's up on stage in between. That's what we like to do. We like to have very high energy, lots of fun. It's never boring, I promise you. Right, Heidi? Right. <laughs> we'll have surprises right. for you. <laughs> for those of you who don't want to get on the stage, you don't have to. No, you, you don't, don't have to. We won't, we, won't, we won't. I mean, we have in the past. We won't do this, but we have all gathered in a circle and sang. And if you don't want yeah, to do it, no, don't have to. Okay. We're, we're not going to do that this time. <laughs> but, of but course, we, the speakers have to all get on the stage. Yes. We no we're all going to have The audience does right. The speakers <laughs> right. We're just pulling your leg. <laughs> but... Um, it's going to be a really, really fun and, and a great day. And another just quick thing I want to mention is we do have our ambassadors who've been working on this event. There's about 15 of them. And what we want to do is we wanted this event to be different, that after the event, after you see these amazing speakers and, and you want to move on and do a lot of their programs and implement that, a lot of times people get very overwhelmed and they're like, oh my gosh, where do I start? And then they just leave the product and they don't do it. Well, we want to change that. So we're going to be having virtual mastermind groups, which are free and included in your ticket. And the ambassadors are going to be leading these groups. So you'll be able to hold each other accountable and say, so say you're doing you know, one of the speakers' programs, or where are you at on that? What are you doing? And this way, it'll keep each other motivated well after this event is over. So that's something unique to um, this marketing conference that we want to, you know, continue it on because we want our next event to bring you guys, you know, back and put you on stage and want to hear, okay, you did this, you went, came, what did you take from away from this event and what did you learn and how did you implement it in your business? Absolutely. So, to get your tickets, um, just go to daywithmasters.com. They're uh, right now twenty to fifty dollars off, depending on the ticket that you get. If you want to meet and sit and have lunch with these phenomenal speakers, there is um, not that many left. I believe there's about seventeen VIP tickets left. We're selling out very quickly with that, so you want to grab your VIP tickets so you can sit with with Bob, JB, Susan, Kathleen, and and Heidi and I, and we have some entertainment going on as well for the some surprises for the VIP lunch. So we're just super excited, and we thank you guys so much for. I know we ran over time, and I, I'm sorry for taking more of your time, but we're just so excited to have you all. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. We'll see you on the 25th. Yes. And Bob, we'll talk to you next week in your podcast. Absolutely. All right. Talk to you later. Thank all you right. guys. Bye, everybody. Thank bye you. Bye. Take care. Bye.